Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutherth, Hurricane Track here. Wednesday now, the 23rd of July, 2025. Appreciate you tuning in to today's video. The main topic, not this again. Yes, we're going to have to deal with yet another system moving across the northern Gulf Coast with a small potential of development over the next few days. I'll tell you all about this. We'll also look at the deep tropics, what might be coming up over the next several days. And then at the end of today's update, an announcement about something that's coming up, a live event on August 20th. Got a special logo for it and everything. Excited about it. I'll tell you about that at the end of today's update. So let's get started, shall we? First of all, National Hurricane Center homepage. We'll kind of talk about this. Uh, I'll explain it. Surface trough, trough of low pressure sitting out there over Florida, northern Florida area. Yeah, some of that's the leftovers of 93L, kind of rode around the ridge. Some slow development is possible, but the biggest threat from this is going to be heavy rain across this region down here. And as we have found out all too painfully this year, from the loss of life to property damage, rain is an impact. Now, we're not expecting this to be some giant rainmaker, but rain can be problematic for travel, for commerce, outdoor activities, obviously. So just keep that in mind, all right? We're not looking for this to develop. I mean, after all, it's only 10%. So 90% chance this does not become a tropical cyclone. So what are we looking at? Well, the uh, surface trough sitting right through here. Again, part of this, the leftover vorticity from 93L that went up and around the ridge over here. Not quite like that, but that's the general idea. And it's back. And uh, there are some showers and thunderstorms in the vicinity of Florida, uh, but nothing really concentrated. And we can see that even clearer on the vorticity signature. There's a piece of energy sitting over Florida itself. And then that stretches out, and that's the key. It is stretched out like taffy out into the Atlantic. It is not bundled up and consolidating. There's 94L, what's left of it anyway. That's a little bit more concentrated. That is too, that's pretty impressive. This does not look like either of these systems, right? So this has a long way to go, but that is energy in the atmosphere, and we do have to watch it for possible development, but I think it's going to be more of a rainmaker than anything else. Now look, the water temperatures, we've talked about this, ad nauseum, as we say, whatever that means, very, very warm, 30 plus Celsius all throughout this area, 31 Celsius, 32 Celsius, we're talking upper 80s to very low 90s. Yes, there is plenty of energy in the surface there of the Gulf, and this could take advantage of that, mainly as a big, big rainmaker. Now look, as this sweeps through, it'll kind of shave off just a little bit of these surface temperatures, but with a big high forecast to rebound again over the eastern portions of North America, whatever water temperature profile, temperature loss that we lose from this system going across, it'll just rebound again. But also this tells me there is a very high precipitable water potential with this system. In other words, it can crank out a lot of heavy rain. So just be aware of that if you've got plans to visit the northern Florida area, the Gulf Coast in the coming days. And then again, I think this is going to make its way across and end up in Texas. And some of that moisture may make its way when this is all said and done into the desert southwest. And we'll look at that as we go forward. So here's what it looks like on the 12Z run of today's GFS, 850 millibars, 5,000 feet up. And this is that vorticity signature that I love to look for. There it is on the GFS represented, all spread out, all that energy. There's 94L, what's left of it. So let's pay attention to see what happens with this uh, system here as we go forward. Look, it's not much. You can see just a slight turning in the wind field here, just a little bit, that little surface trough coming across. High pressure sitting out over the southwest Atlantic. So some heavy rain from this, but it never consolidates, and I wouldn't worry about it too much. But you can track that energy. This is by the weekend. It's now over Texas, and that's going to keep heading west and uh, getting pushed so by this big ridge over here. And some of that energy and moisture will make its way into the desert southwest. This is another perspective. I really like this. should show this more often. This is your... 300 millibar to 700 millibar layer of the atmosphere. So it's, you know, between mid-level and upper levels of the atmosphere. And we're looking at the total uh, humidity, like moist versus dry. The brown is dry, the green, and the deeper the green, the higher the humidity values are. And what we can see with our system here, 
Plenty of moisture in and around Florida, no question. So where does it end up? Let's drop me out of the frame and we'll follow this. It goes across the Gulf, as you can see. Potential for some very heavy rain from that. I want to keep emphasizing that fact. But then watch what happens with it. Here it is now, and it moves on into the, uh, the western parts of the Gulf and then into Texas. And then eventually that moisture gets part of the monsoonal flow into the desert southwest. And I can show you that. Drop my telestration out. Let's switch this over to the southwest U.S. Actually, I think the whole western U.S. is probably going to be better. There we go. So let's back this up just a little bit. You can see the moisture comes in right there. There it is. And then it kind of gets blended in eventually. Ah, look, there you go, right into the desert southwest, right about the time that I'm going out there. Hey, how about that? So if you have interest out here uh, for monsoon chasing or hiking or whatever, it could be a little wet coming up towards the early part of next week. And that could lead to some flash flooding, some high base thunderstorms, lightning potential, all kinds of mayhem ensues when you get that deep of a moisture plume into the southwest United States. That monsoonal flow, that's really a thing. And I'm going to be out there, I'll talk about that more on this coming Monday. Uh, but yeah, that tropical influence there, look, it comes across, gets pulled into the monsoonal flow, and there you go. All right. What about the rest of the Atlantic? Again, a great layer of the atmosphere to examine. Uh, and you can really see the shape of the tropical waves on here, by the way. There's one there. There's another one there. Over here, over Africa, maybe a weaker one here. And as I put this into motion, watch what happens. Everything marches across, but look at all the brown to the north of all those little green areas of low pressure, little weak surface troughs coming across, tropical waves as they were. The dry air and just the overall stability of the deep tropics not going to allow anything to develop over the next week or so, it does appear. But each of these impulses coming across gradually moistens the atmosphere. Some of that energy ends up over in the Western Caribbean, maybe the Eastern Pacific to help fire off something there. So we have to keep an eye on these. But I think it's really fascinating that you can literally see impulse after impulse coming off over the next week or so. So yeah, we'll watch and see how this evolves. I don't see anything to be too concerned with outside of the important flood threat. And we do have to emphasize that, I think, in the communications side of the weather business more and more, that rainfall is an impact. And you can see our feature here going across the northern Gulf and into Texas and beyond. Now, here is my little announcement. Very excited about this. Believe it or not, it has been 20 years since we here at Hurricane Track first debuted live streaming from a vehicle and then eventually our remote camera systems. We were the very first to ever do it going all the way back to 2005 and we're going to have a special show all about it live on YouTube on August the 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I will certainly talk about this more, but the official announcement of it is happening right here. I will have several guests, including my very good longtime friend and colleague, Jesse Bass, Mike Watkins, and Jim Williams from Hurricane City. He doesn't know yet. i got to invite him. I just came up with all of this today in terms of solidifying the date. You know, I was thinking about one date or another date, and I thought, you know, August 20th, that's typically the ringing of the bell when the hurricane season normally ramps up. That's a good date to do this, and we're going to go back, talk about how the project was even started, where it all came from, some of the technological advances that we have made over these 20 years. We're going to look at some archival footage, some of it never before seen, stuff that didn't make the documentaries that was left on the editing room floor, as the saying goes. So yeah, 20 years now of doing it live uh, and how far we have come with that. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do a special live event right here on YouTube on August the 20th. Again, I'll talk about it more between now and then, but mark your calendars and uh, we'll have a good time reminiscing about how it all began 20 years ago. Hard to believe, but yep, here we are. All right, so that is about it. You know, not this again. Yeah, it's a good headline, but I wouldn't worry too much about it other than, of course, the heavy rainfall threat. And beyond that, the rest of the tropics look like they're going to behave themselves. 
as we round out the month of July. All right? So let me sign off, get this online for you. As always, thank you for tuning in. From all of us at Hurricane Track, thanks for watching. I'm Mark Suttoth. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.